So tonight we are starting to talk about salt. First off, we're looking at this really important relationship between KW, KA, and KB, as well as some neutralization reaction stuff. So first off, let's look at this relationship between KW, KA, and KB. Between any acid conjugate, conjugate base pair, remember those differ by just one hydrogen ion, the following is true. KW is equal to KA times KB. And this is on your formula chart. As hopefully you remember from previously, KW is still equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14th power. So because of the way math and our log function works, taking the negative log of all those things in that KW equals KA times KB is going to give us this other similar relationship here where PKA plus PKB is equal to 14. So let's look at a few examples using these equations. On example number one, we're given our Ka value here. We want to know what the conjugate base is of our HCO3 minus and find the value of Kb and PKB. So let's start with that conjugate base. Well, this guy is an acid. We're given the Ka for it. We're looking with the conjugate base also. So acids donate an H+. Plus. So to find the conjugate base, we need to take an H plus away. That's going to be CO3 to minus. Now let's start looking at our Kb. Well, we just learned that Kw is equal to Ka times Kb. We can go ahead and rearrange that to solve for our KB, which would then be KW divided by our KA value. So that should give us 2.1 times 10 to the negative 4. Well, next thing we want is our PKB. Well, that P still means the negative log. So our PKB is going to be the negative log of our KB value. And that is going to give us 3.67. Let's not forget about our sig fig rules. Our normal number has two sig figs here. So we need two digits after the decimal spot for our log value. Only what's after the decimal spot is significant in our log values. So uh, given a little bit of use of these equations, go ahead and try out example two on your own. Pause the video and resume when you're ready to check. So on example number two, we're given the PKB for our CN minus. We want to know the conjugate acid as well as the Ka value. Starting with our conjugate acid, CN minus is a base. Bases accept a proton, so we're going to give it a proton. That makes our conjugate acid HCN. We want to know its Ka value. Well, I know Kw equals Ka times Kb, so Ka has to equal our Kw divided by Kb. Hmm. I don't have my Kb, though. I have my PKB, which is the negative log of the Kb, so we can take the antilog. Antilog would be 10 to the negative PK, PKB power, power, or 10 to the negative 4.80. We should have found that Ka to be 6.3 times 10 to the negative 10. Again, let's not forget about our sig fig rules. Our log number has two sig figs. So we had two sig figs in our Kb and then our Ka that we found here. You might have even done the problem another way. So let's take a look at another way we could have done this problem. Another way we could have solved this problem was knowing that PKB plus PKA equals 14. So 14 minus 4.80 gave us 9.20. And then we can take the antilog of our PKA to find our KA value, which is still the same, 6.3 times 10 to the negative 10. Both are perfectly acceptable and correct ways to do these problems. 
So this will be an important relation relationship as we continue on our salty adventures in the this set of video lessons. One more thing we need to look at before we continue on is our neutralization reactions. Anytime an Arrhenius acid and base react together, we're going to produce a salt and water. Water is formed from the H plus and the OH minus ions coming together to form HOH, which is just simply rearranged into our water, H2O. So we see our general reaction here. We have our strong acid, HX plus MOX, sorry, Arrhenius acid and base. We're forming water from the H and OH minus, and then the MX come and form a salt. So we need to be able to write net ionic reactions for our acid base reactions. Recall that when writing our net ionic reactions, anything that is a solid liquid, like our water here, or gas must stay together. Anything that is aqueous, caveat on that in a moment, anything that is aqueous so for now can be broken apart. So if we break apart all of our aqueous and leave our liquid water together, we get our complete ionic equation, which includes our spectator ions. The spectator ions are the things that remain the same on both sides. That's our M plus and our X minus. So we're left with H plus plus OH minus yielding that liquid water to give us our net ionic equation. When we write out that net ionic equation, we do need to make sure we are including our states of matter. And lastly, this will always be the net ionic equation for any strong, strong neutralization type, uh, neutralization reaction. So let's look at one more example here. We want to complete and balance the following neutralization reaction here. Uh, well, it's a double replacement reaction. Our H and OH minus are going to come together to form our water. And then we're going to form our salt from the sodium and the sulfate. We do need to make sure that we are balancing our charge for that compound. Sodium is plus one, sulfate is two minus. So we're going to need two of our sulfate ions. As we balance this, we're going to need two sodiums, which gives us two OHs, and two Hs, two OH plus two H would form two water molecules. So that would be our final balanced chemical equation there. Go ahead and take a second and write that net ionic reaction out. Resume the video when you're ready to check. So what did you write down for that net ionic reaction? Well, we got a strong acid plus a strong base. Our net ionic is always the same. So if you remembered that, awesome. If not, and you went through our steps, we needed to keep our liquid together. We can break apart anything aqueous, which would include our sodium sulfate over here, meaning that sodium and sulfate were our spectator ions, leaving us with our H plus ions plus the OH minus ions to form that liquid water. Well, this is the only the net ionic for strong, strong neutralizations. We need to take a look at what happens in those net ionics for when we have something weak versus something strong. In a net ionic equation for weak acid or base or strong base and weak acid, the weak species does not dissociate. Since a weak species does not dissociate, it doesn't actually break apart into ions. Remember, like less than 1% of our weak acids and weak bases dissociate. We don't break it apart like we do anything else that's aqueous. If it is a weak acid or a weak base, even though it's aqueous, we do not break it apart. Again, that's because weak doesn't dissociate into solution, so we need to accurately represent that. So let's start by looking at the balanced neutralization reaction for ammonia and our perchloric acid. So first off, since these are both not Arrhenius acids and bases here, this is a Bronsted-Lowry base reaction. 
where we have our HClO4, which is a strong acid, reacting with the NH3, which is a weak base. We can see that that hydrogen was donated to the NH3 to form NH4 plus and that perchlorate ion. Well, we just said that weak things, they do not dissociate. So when we go and write our net ionic for this, that weak base has to stay together. Strong acids do dissociate 100%. So we're going to show it dissociated or broken apart into its ions. So let's start on this one by writing our complete ionic. So in our complete ionic, we can see that our weak base has stayed together while our strong acid has been broken apart into its two ions. From the complete ionic to the net ionic, we need to cancel out any spectator ions. The only thing that's a spectator ion or the same on both sides is that perchlorate ion. So that's going to leave us then with our net ionic equation with no spectator ions included. Again, we want to make sure that we're always including states of matter for any net ionic equation. We have one more that we're going to look at, and on this one, I do want you to try. So pause the video, give it a go, resume when you're ready to check your work. Here we have our strontium hydroxide reacting with acetic acid to form water and a salt. Our salt is strontium acetate. Acetate is always aqueous. Uh, we still have yet to balance this though. I have two acetate ions on my product side, so you needed two acetic acids on your reactant side. That gives us two H's and two OH's, which would form two water molecules. So that should be balanced there. Then we have to go and write our net ionic. So we need to accurately represent things as to whether they break apart or stay together. Well, we should know that the things that will stay together now are solids, liquids, like our liquid water, and gases. The other things that stay together are weak acids. Acetic acid is a weak acid. It needs to stay together. But strontium hydroxide is a strong base, so we can break that apart, and we can break apart our salt as well. From here, you could go ahead and jump straight to our net ionic, but let's take a look at our complete ionic first. As we take a look at our complete ionic, the only thing that's the same on both sides is that strontium ion. We don't have OH- on both sides. We don't have acetic acid on both sides. We don't have water on both sides. And we don't have acetate ions on both sides. Notice that these all also have a coefficient of 2, which in our net ionic will reduce down. Again, if you went straight from our balanced chemical equation to your net ionic, that is absolutely fine, but you could go to that complete ionic in between as well. When we do get to that net ionic, make sure that we've reduced our coefficients to the simplest ratio and that we have states of matter on everything. So there you have part one of our salty salts. Continue on for more.